to invite practitioner Jennifer Williams Livingstone this morning to bring you the message. Please put your hands together and welcome her with love. Good morning, friends. And welcome, welcome. Let me add my own words of welcome. But firstly, I want to specially thank Sandy for that guided meditation and the period of silence. And she doesn't know how much she's in sync with my talk this morning. So thank you, Sandy. Very much so. And you might have noticed in the program, so let me even give her a bigger shout out, that Carol was listed as my assistant this morning and she had another appointment and Sandy so willingly stepped in. So thank you, Sandra. So today we are wrapping up a month that was dedicated to gratitude, as you've been told. And for me, this theme of gratitude really began on the fifth Sunday of March, which was Youth Sunday, when Hanif Lalu spoke on an attitude of gratitude. And if you don't routinely come to Youth Sunday, take it from me, you miss quite a lot. And the month was then officially kicked off by Reverend John with his talk on the parable of the Pui. Do you all remember that? Yes. So um, he introduced the gratitude card, which Sandy went through uh, um, some of those with us this morning. So if you haven't filled one in, take one home with you. There are some on the usher's desk. And just be grateful. Believe me, you will see the benefits of it. And so as I was reflecting um, on the topic for my talk this morning, I was looking over the past few weeks when I had an opportunity to catch up with my siblings and each one was sharing with me something they were truly grateful for and that had occurred recently in their lives. And this ranged from being able to survive a company buyout and still have a job to making a decision to downsize, sell a home and finding the right conduct to purchase as well as visiting the doctor and getting back a clean bill of health on a biopsy. And this got me thinking of how much more I had to be grateful for in my own life and that of my family. And so I have titled my talk this morning, The Grateful Heart. See how much we are in sync? So having set the universe on notice, as if on cue, I received an emailing for one of Oprah and Deepak's 21 Days Meditation series that I usually participate in. And what was the title for this series? Manifesting grace through gratitude. <laughs> you see, gratitude draws and attracts into our lives things that we are grateful for. And if you think about it, we get what we put out. Therefore, if you are grateful, you will get and receive back into your life and into your experience everything that's required in order to build gratitude in your life and reveal God's grace. In other words, gratitude is like a magnet. The more grateful you are, the more you will receive to be grateful for. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of this teaching, The Science of Mind, in his book, Can We Talk to God? And I'll just put a plug here. That's the book we're using in this this series of classes, The Power of the Word, so you should come on a Thursday. It says, he says, and I quote, there must be a conscious belief on the part of those seeking to demonstrate this principle that their faith and thought are but the avenues through which the law expresses itself to them, end quote. While we know that this is the way the law expresses, we must be mindful of our thoughts. As Eric Butterworth tells us in his book, Spiritual Economics, and I quote, some persons, realizing the importance of the grateful heart, begin looking for things for which to give thanks. However, they mistakenly start with a perspective of inadequacy and insufficiency, and thus they simply become more conscious of limitations." End quote. Butterworth goes on further to state, you do not need something to be grateful for. You need only the desire to feel grateful. He says, invoke Plato's law. When you feel grateful, you become great and eventually attract great things. 
Thus, we can see the subtle difference and how much we need to be mindful of the perspective from which we come in developing this attitude of gratitude. One of the interesting quotes that I found concerning gratitude is from Michael Josephson, which says, the world has enough beautiful mountains and meadows, spectacular skies and serene lakes. It has enough lush forests, flowered fields and sandy beaches. It has plenty of stars and the promise of a new sunrise and sunset every day. What the world needs more of is people to appreciate and enjoy it." End quote. Are we taking the time then each, each day to love and appreciate the world in which we live? Perhaps we could take a page out of this father's book. <laughs> a man brought his son to a grocery store but as soon as they walked in the store, the young child began to throw a temper tantrum, and parents in here would know what that is. And while they went down each aisle, the child would yell, throw items in and out of the cart, and overall just be an annoyance. Anyone can relate? Despite the scene his son was causing, the father was cool and collected, slowly and calmly saying, don't worry, Donald. It'll be all right, Donald. We'll be home soon. A nearby mother was very impressed with the father's self-control and wanted to express her gratitude for such calm parenting. Sir, I'm amazed that you're able to be so calm. It's not every day I see such patience and gracious parenting. No, little guy, what seems to be the problem, Donald? Oh no, ma'am, you're mistaken, the father interjected. This is my son, Henry. I am Donald. <laughs> okay. What then is it that we need to do to cultivate an attitude of gratitude and come from the place of a grateful heart? <laughs> Firstly, when we use the word cultivate, it is often associated with farming some kind of crop, but it also means to develop, promote, encourage, nurture, foster, or support, and it is the second meaning which I want us to give our attention to. Having an attitude of gratitude means that our approach, our outlook, feelings, our mindset, our way of thinking about conditions in our lives is always with gratefulness and appreciation, no matter what the situation we find ourselves in. As Paul, St. Paul in his writing to the Thessalonians stated, and it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, in everything give thanks. In our Science of Mind textbook on page 497, it states, and I quote, gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence and it is crowned in heaven with a consciousness of unity. As a guiding practice, gratitude is the spiritual practice of the realization that all good has already been provided." End quote. Being grateful then means that it doesn't matter if our glass is half empty or half full. We are always grateful for what we have. We tend too often to focus on what we don't have in life rather than focusing on the incredible good we do have. So let's look at some things for which we can be grateful. The ability to breathe on our own. There are persons who need life support to do so. The ability to move freely from one place to the next, whether we are driving our own cars or we are being transported. Yet how often do we express our gratitude by just being grateful for the car or the person who is providing the service? What about our friends who are always there for us and looking out for our best interests? Or we are in a relationship where we have a partner, a spouse, or a significant other, and who willingly helps in the home? How often do we express our gratitude to them for who they are and for what they do? I will now share some affirmations with you that you can use. I'll say them first, and we can say them together. 
I am grateful for the loving support of friends and family who are always there in times of need. Together, I'm grateful for the loving support of friends and family who are always there in times of need. Today, I give thanks knowing that the goodness of God exists in my life, has health, wealth, and an abundance of loving relationships. So I'll break it down. Today, I give thanks knowing the goodness of God exists in my life. Together. Today, I give thanks knowing that the goodness of God exists in my life as health, wealth, and an abundance of loving relationships. Wealth and an abundance of loving relationships. I am grateful as I awaken to each new day and the opportunity to give and receive the gift of love. I am grateful as I awaken to each new day and the opportunity to give and receive the gift of love. And now to your neighbor say, I am grateful that you are a part of my life. You make the world a better place. I am grateful that you are a part of my life. You make the world a better place. Yes, I'm grateful that you are a part of my life. You make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, affirmations and treatments are the tools we use to build a consciousness of clarity. But words alone are not enough to establish a consciousness of belief. We have been told over and over that every good thing has already been given. But for many of us, we have been raised with the idea that there is not enough. Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, well-known New Thought luminary and author of several books, including The Art of Uncertainty and The Art of Abundance, in sharing his mindfulness practice called 30 Days of Conscious Gratitude, states, and I quote, an attitude of gratitude automatically brings with it a shift in consciousness, which says, I am open to receiving with a grateful heart. Dr. Jones goes on to state, in these times of great challenge in our world, there could be no better time to practice an attitude of gratitude in our giving and receiving. We have the opportunity to reflect upon the good in our lives regardless of how empty we might determine our glass to be." End quote. Friends, if you look deeply enough, you will find blessings even in things and events events that on the surface you might tend to judge as negative. Dr. Holmes also reinforces this point in an article from the Science of Mind archives on one of his broadcasts of this thing called life. He stated that we should be grateful for life and praise the giver of all good, which is God. He reminds us that the psalmist David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Dr. Holmes goes on to state, there is a divine presence at the center of things which respond to us when we give recognition to it. Friends, Jesus, the master teacher, recognized the God presence within each one of us, and he approached life knowing this to be the truth. Thus, he was able to perform the many miracles that he carried out while on this plane of existence. Since we know there is a divine presence at the center of everything and everyone which responds to us as we bless our lives and affairs, we are recognizing the divine law of good running through everything and our recognition, acceptance, and affirmative prayer of this good puts the universe on notice to respond to us in a new and expanded way. It rises to meet our expectations, our faith and conviction, and ultimately, our acceptance of the good we desire is demonstrated in our experience. So as we look at ways to cultivate an attitude of gratitude as a result of a grateful heart, here is one practice that you can use, and Sandy alluded to that in wrapping up her talk, her introduction this morning. And it was in our words of wisdom, so I don't know how many of you take home your program on a Sunday and look at it. But this month, 
The words of wisdom said, cultivating gratitude, and it was contributed to the HuffPost by Dr. Randy Carmen, psychologist, educator, and author, and I'll share it with you. The most common method for cultivating gratitude is by keeping a gratitude journal and recording experiences for which one is grateful. The idea is to write about at least three positive experiences on a daily basis. Examples include taking notice of something in nature, an object of beauty, a pleasant conversation with a friend, a good cup of coffee, or helping someone with a problem. Recording these positive experiences boosts levels of alertness, enthusiasm, determination, attentiveness, and energy, especially when compared to those who recorded or focused on negative events. Our deals rarely go according to plan or without unexpected challenges. Some of, some of us can naturally appreciate the sweet moments as they happen throughout the day while many of us need to cultivate this sense of appreciation. Research shows that recording experiences for which one is grateful for only two consecutive weeks has lasting positive effects maintained for up to six months. And it therefore behoves us to keep a gratitude journal. End of that excerpt. Dr. Merritt Jones, in his mindfulness practice to build an attitude of gratitude, also recommends doing a journal for 30 days of conscious gratitude. And not only should you write three new things on the current day, but you should start by reading the list from day one. And he states that at the end of the 30 days, you will discover that you have deeply seeded within your consciousness the good already existing in your life and the seed for new and expanded good in the future. And friends, I will give you this as your assignment should you choose to undertake it according to Reverend John, um, and that is to commit to starting a gratitude journal. What we praise, we raise. But for those of us, however, or who perhaps may not journal consistently, there is that other mindfulness practice that you can do to cultivate gratitude through the senses. And you just got that experience that was shared with you by Sandy. So I had incorporated it in my talk, not for an experience, but just to give you the steps. And this is something that you can do for five minutes at the start of your day. So here again, as a reminder, you're going to use your breath to anchor yourself in the moment. And then secondly, you'll bring to mind a sight for which you are grateful. And you move next. You shift to your sense of smell. And you continue to work with the senses. And you move on. You tune into the sounds around you. And just shift your attention to hear and listening, really listening. And as you continue in the state of gratitude for your senses, you awaken your taste buds. And of course, the world of touch, how important that is. You then simply allow yourself to feel and have that experience of touch. And perhaps if you have someone nearby, just hug them and feel that sense of human contact. But as you end the practice, please carry the feeling of gratitude with you throughout the day as you savor the moment. Remember that you can offer thanks to each person who does anything at all for you, even if it's their job to help you. When you are grateful, when you let your heart open up and be filled with appreciation, your life takes on new meaning. Friends, in wrapping up this talk with a grateful heart, myself, for having just had the opportunity to share with you, I'd like to leave this quote from Melody Beattie. It says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, and confusion to clarity. 
It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, bring peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Namaste.